welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. We are back with Claire Lopez, the Vice President for Research at the Center for Security Policy in Washington, D.C., the renowned expert on everything in the Middle East, especially Iran. Claire, welcome back. Thank you, Barry. I'm very glad to be with you. So in our last segment, we were talking about what's happened in Iran, uh, specifically President Trump authorizing a very um, aggressive response to the Iranian terror, taking out the leader of the worldwide terror network, the Quds Force, um, General Soleimani at the Baghdad airport. Um, Iran has struck back. Uh, they have sent uh, maybe a dozen missiles against American bases. Uh, the story out is those missiles, get this, intentionally missed their targets so as not to cause casualties. Uh, do you have a thought on that? The Pentagon now believes that, uh, or at least the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Milley, I should say, uh, has stated his belief uh, that those attacks were intended to cause American casualties. Uh, they did not, thankfully, because our uh, bases and in, indeed all of our missions, diplomatic and otherwise, across uh, the region had gone on super high alert after the Friday, January 3rd uh, killing of Suleimani. So thankfully there were no casualties, but General Milley says that they intended there to be. That's interesting. Uh, so we've got two different stories. Uh, in on the break, you were telling me about um, a special religious significance of a red flag flying now in Iran that signals a lot more Iranian response. Can you explain that? What is the religious significance of that red flag? What does it mean? Right. So the red flag of war was hoisted over the mosque in Jam Karan, Iran, the day after Soleimani was killed. Jam Karan is the site of a well into which uh, Shiites who are Twelvers, that is followers of the 12th Imam, whom they believe to be the Mahdi figure, the messianic figure of Shiite Islam, who will return at the end of time to usher in the day of judgment, that that 12th Imam uh, who disappeared back in uh, the, uh, the 900s, no, I'm sorry, in the ninth century, the 800s disappeared. They believe down that well in Jamkaran, close to the seminary city of Qom, and they believe that the Mahdi, the 12th Imam, will come back out of that well at the end of time. Now, the raising of the red flag over that town, over the mosque of Jamkaran, um, is highly symbolic. On the flag, which is blood red, are written in white Farsi script letters, uh, O ye avengers of Hussein. Now that is understood to mean the call for blood and vengeance by the Iranian regime. Hussein, of course, uh, was the grandson of Muhammad, the founder of Islam, who died in a battle against Sunni forces at the Battle of Karbala in the year 680. And he was oh. revered by Shiite. Uh, Muslims, Suleimani is now being equated, um, uh, associated at least, with the figure of Hussein. That red flag signifies more revenge, avenging of his death to come. The flag, as far as I know, is still flying. Well, it's interesting because we're getting mixed signals. The red flag, as you said, is a battle cry. It's still up. Uh, the regime in Tehran announced an $80 million bounty for anyone that kills President Trump, uh, notwithstanding the idiotic response of uh, a certain comedian in Hollywood, George Lopez, who said he'd do it for half of that. I really hope the Secret Service brings him in for a public threat against the president, which is a felony. Uh, and maybe he'll have a nice talking to and have an attitude adjustment. Notwithstanding that, the back channel speeches coming out of Switzerland, supposedly conveyed from uh, reputable sources within the Iranian government, are saying, we're done. We're not going to do anything else. And then 
What did they do? Apparently, they shot down a Ukrainian commercial jetliner as it was leaving Tehran on the day the missiles were flying. The original story out of Tehran was it was obviously a mechanical failure. Uh, Iran announced within an hour or two of the crash, they'd already looked at the black box and proved it was mechanical failure. Boeing came out and said, that's impossible. Uh, and so what did Tehran do? Then they changed their mind and said, well, we, we really haven't looked at it yet, but no one can see the black box. What are the ramifications of this shoot down, Claire? Uh, the world is saying it was a missile. Well, uh, the Pentagon again um, has um, uh, let it be known uh, that it uh, is convinced that, that that civilian passenger airplane, uh, by the way, a three-year-old Boeing that had just been checked out very recently for safety, uh, a safety checkup, uh, that, that that Boeing was, was indeed shot out of the sky by the Iranians themselves. That is the conclusion we have today from the Pentagon. I mean, what that seems to suggest is um, without knowing any, any more right at this point, but it, it would seem to suggest that there are some, uh, you know, uh, anti, um, you know, air defenders uh, in and around Tehran airport with a very jittery finger. Well, there's actually one apologist news guy uh, said uh, early today that it might have been an automated system as if these missiles arm uh, lock on target and launch themselves. I don't believe that for a no. second. No. Um, somebody pushed the button, and those missile systems usually require two button pushers 10 feet apart, so one guy can't launch a missile by himself. Uh, I've actually seen the U.S. Navy systems when I was at sea with them, and uh, you've got one guy on one side of the room and a gal on the other side of the room. They can't see each other, and they have to push the button at the exact time to launch a missile. Uh, so somebody made a decision to shoot that plane out of the air and I wonder from a commercial aviation viewpoint, if this is gonna isolate Tehran, what airline with any sort of brain cells operational would put passengers in the line of fire knowing that Tehran has a short finger on a trigger? Well, they may not have realized how jittery those air defense um, units perhaps are. Uh, this was now a they know. airliner. Yeah, right. This was a civilian airliner, a Ukrainian um, airliner. It was a Boeing, as I just said, um, uh, full of passengers that had just taken off from from Tehran Airport. I mean, if, if if they can't tell the difference between a Boeing that has just within minutes taken off from the airport, headed to Ukraine, uh, and an incoming a missile of some kind or hostile air attack, then uh, I think all air traffic over Iran probably is going to be grounded. Well, every American airliner has been banned uh, mm -hmm. from any overflights. Uh, that happened a few days ago from the FAA. I wouldn't be surprised if the rest of the world does the same. And I'm going to be very curious, Claire, that we watch in the coming days how Iran gets itself out of this mess. They murdered a lot of people that were not combatants, that were actually providing income to Iran, and they're now dead. And Canada especially lost a lot of its citizens. Yeah, 176 people lost their lives on that aircraft uh, for no reason, for no reason at all. Um, but, but your point about the isolation of the Iranian regime in terms of air traffic, I think that's significant. Um, this could really serve to isolate the regime even further and, and, and to a further extent than sanctions already have. But the, but, but the, the uh, isolation of Iran as, a, as an air destination, flight destination, um, you know, uh, national airlines destination, could really, really um, be a very serious development for this regime. Yeah, I, they have two issues. It's the economic issue, and then they're standing in world commerce, both of which could be dramatically impacted in the coming days. And we'll see whether or not they start telling the truth. They've issued a number of different stories and have walked back each one of them after they've been 
rebuked by uh, various governments and aviation authorities around the world, from Ukraine to Canada to the United States, and the manufacturer of the plane, Boeing. So, yeah, it could be very, very significant politically and economically to Iran in the coming days. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report. I want to remind our viewers to text the word truth, the word truth, send it to 88202 so you'll be subscribed to our text message service. It's always free. You'll never miss an episode. For ATP Report, thanks to Claire Lopez. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Thank <laughs> you.